All right, we got a huge, huge problem today. No, we don't normally have problems with our tanks. Well, today we kind of walked into just a bomb went off and now we have to act pretty quick. Okay, for starters, you see this 265 with Tesla in it. You know, I was messing around. I was going to re-escape the, the tank, but I walked in today and I'm like, why is the water let level down low? Wait a minute, what's going on here? That tells me the tank's off level, but this is let level cement. So I start looking and I see that this stand sort of gave out. I can't open the, these doors. And as you, you can see, this whole stand is starting to bow out. This whole bottom is disintegrated. If we look underneath, you can see just how dilapidated that stand is. And that is from essentially flooding the fish room and having these skinny scrawny stands over here most of the stands in here are all metal never have to worry about it but kind of like that tank there and here you can see this one the the bottom has two by fours going around it that's not nice and sturdy this tank here has like one by threes that are holding it to together so whoever manufactured this stand was, you know, living on a prayer. And, you know, if you have wood that thin that's holding up this amount of weight and it get, gets wet, that is going to, uh, you know, add up to a catastrophe. So we're going to go ahead and drain this tank, move our boy Tet to Tesla. And to do that, we've got to do a few other things. Okay, while we have this draining, I'll have to fix some problems afterwards once this drains down. But the weight's coming off of it, so every minute that goes by, it's a bit better for the time being. I'm going to go ahead and move Tesla into this tank here, which means I got to move the Goonch and this little Terashuki cat. It's a little bit confined quote quarters for him, but while we get his tank fixed, it'll be the right thing for him. So I'm going to go ahead and clear some things out. We'll get these guys moving here in a sec. Okay, so first up, we've got this little Niger catfish. He was actually growing pretty well in here, but now he's going to move from this 135 we're going to go ahead and move him right into the 195 with the rest of his old friends. Now he can clean up a bunch of garbage in here. He can eat more. He's actually got a bit more room if you ask me. He's got more of a footprint. But man, he is a pretty little catfish. I love these guys. It was so fun to grow them out. And they get massive and they're just gentle giants. You guys know I love my Niger cats. Okay, now the albino goons. Oh man, he is so cool. Now you guys know I wanted to try him in with the parrot Eba. So I think I'm just going to try that now and see how they get along. I think everything will work out as it should. I'm like, oh, I got to get a bigger net. All right, Mr. Goons, take two. Let's go, little buddy. Oh man. He is a big boy. Absolutely love this fish. Look at that gold coloring. Now, I hope you boys can just play well to get together. Let me tell you. Oh my goodness. See the goonch next to that lungfish. There he is in with the Paraiba now. They are pretty close in size. The Paraiba definitely has them. But I got to watch this guy i might take out this lungfish i don't know he's just making introductions yeah i just didn't want anything to happen i was honestly more worried about the paraiba but the paraiba seems unfazed now i just got gonna watch the lungfish with the goonch all right so you know i'm always working while that tank's being drained you can see all this nasty crud. That is what was all over the cartridge filter from the monster pond the other day. Looks like that, looks like that. And then once I clean it, it looks nice and white like this, like a paper cartridge should be. So that is uh, one bad bloom in the monster pond. And that's what the cartridge filters look like. And you best believe it, ain't too much getting through that stuff there. So you wanna go ahead and keep your cartridge filters clean. All right, we're about halfway empty now. I am going to get another hose in here and start draining it out. But since I put this driftwood in there and they've got all that sponge all over it, I've just seen the colony of shrimp. There was like 50 of them all over that piece of wood. 
They kind of bl blend in with it because they're like black or blue shrimp. There go some small guys on the bottom there. Once the eel's out of here, I can probably find a different tank for them shrimp to, to, to go into. But it was just kind of cool having the shrimp in with the eel. I'm surprised with all of his, uh, you know, shocking capabilities that the shrimp were able to survive and thrive in, in here. That is pretty cool. But the plan is we got to do a new stand on this tank. We got the gooch out. This tank is empty. I've got it back up onto the system. It'll be a little bit of a downgrade for them for a while until we can get this tank fixed. Hell, might, might even uh, go ahead and build a steel stand for it and stack too tall here. We're, we're not sure yet, but we shall see. Guys, you guys always wonder how we move this thing. Dry part of the net, or dry part of the handle, dry part of the net, never gets wet, you'll never get shot. Right now, he's in a bit much of water, so I'm gonna play this one safe. And he's gonna get angry here. We're not only taking his tank, we're also taking his room. Come on, buddy, you swim in. Okay, now it's steadily shocking that net right now, but because Josh's end of the net is dry, he's not getting shocked at all. Now he's got to be sure not to touch anything wet on the net. <laughs> There you go. That's how a professional does it. There you go. These move. Okay, the tank is now pretty much drained. Don't have to really worry about it no, no more. But I do still have my colony of shrimp in here. I'm gonna leave just about an inch of water in the tank or so and let the, the shrimp ha have at it. I'll just leave the power head hooked up in there. Just creating some air and some flow. And then we can start devising a plan whether we're going to rebuild the stand, get a new, new one built, try and salvage th this one. We're not entirely sure yet. There are options, but we're going to have to think on it. All right, while Tesla is in this tank, he likes to sit up against the front glass. So it is a perfect time to go ahead and bust out a tape me measure. Oh, whoop, whoop, there we go. So he's a little bit crunched up in the back, so he could... Uh, Sprawl out a bit longer, but there we go. He is right past 39 and a quarter, I would say. Yeah, it's really hard to tell, but yeah, he's right at around there. So maybe if he fanned out a little bit in the tail, see how he's kind of bent over there. He might be able to make it to 40 inches long, but he is definitely a big beast of an electric eel. There goes my arm next to him, and he just keeps going and going and going. He is in this 135 gallon. He'll be fine for the time until we are able to fix his tank and get him back into bigger quarters. But as you can see, they kind of just sit here and chill all day long. Okay, things are calmed down a bit. We got everything in the right places. Everyone's together. Nobody's in harm's way. We got some quarantine fish that are getting ready to come out of quarantine soon. That's this red tail giant garami. That's the gold dorado I took out the thousand gallon. We've got some more fish over here. The Gunch and Perry Eva are doing fantastic together. I'm getting ready to move them into larger quarters here in the next couple of days once I can really watch them. But then the rest of these are pretty much all fish that are going up for adoption. I'll be doing a new list on Facebook here probably tomorrow and uh, we will go ahead and start putting all these fish up for adoption starting fresh in the new year we got lots of stuff available so very cool but we've got lots more stuff coming and uh, we are pretty much just getting started so we will catch you guys in the next video as always stay fishy my friends